Welcome back to the channel. I'm Damo. I'm Nick. And today we've got the team that lost 134 games by Foolish Baseball. Really popular content creator. We know yeah. he's done some really good videos. You seem to really enjoy them. We've enjoyed them. I was about to say I have no idea what this is about. That's obviously a lie. It's obviously a bad <laughs> team that lost 134 yeah, games. It seems like they had a really rough season. So yeah, yeah. When 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 did this happen to the Cubs? The Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> This is Padre season now. <laughs> yeah. hey, I think we've already won enough that that can't oh, actually actually. mathematically happen. But yeah, interested to see what team it is, how bad this season was. Yeah. And um, yeah, should we just jump straight into it? Definitely. Fun times in Cleveland again. Still Cleveland. Every time we've got a bad video, it seems to end up being Cleveland. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cleveland. We we didn't pick these, okay? It's the viewing audience that are picking these. And come on down to Cleveland Town, everyone. Our baseball team won only 20 games. Oh. 20 games? So it's a different number of games back then. In the year 1898, the Spanish-American yeah. War was fought. Also, we had baseball. I miss baseball so much, I'm dying inside. That season, the Cleveland Spiders finished fifth in the National League. Their best player was a pitcher named Denton. Boston Bean Eaters. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, the Chicago Orphans. Brooklyn Bridegrooms. Wow. Yeah, there's some, there's some there's strange some... old names there. Louisville Colonels. Yeah. There's not really many Chicago, that are still the same. Chicago Orphans. Of all of those in MLB, you've still got Baltimore got Orioles, you've got the Reds, you've got the Phillies. Pirates. Pirates. That's it, all the rest of the That's it, yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> Although he was known by many as Cy, short for Cyclone. Cy Young oh, Cy never Young. won mm. a Cy Young Award, strange, but he did manage to win 25 <laughs> games in 1898. The following season, the Cleveland Spiders as a team won just 20, making them the worst team in MLB history by pretty wow. much all measures. How did this happen? I got three words for you. Conflict of interest. Let's take it from the beginning. In 1887, Frank Robeson, not that guy, that guy, resurrected the Cleveland Blues as an American Association team. Previously, there had been a Cleveland Blues franchise that played in the National Association. In 1889, they adopted the Spiders nickname and moved to something called the National League. That's a dumb name for a league, it's never gonna last. 1892 <laughs> was the year of the best Spiders team. Cy Young had a terrific nice. season, and they finished second in the National League with a record of 93 wins and 56 losses. Fast forward five years, and the Spiders were still a solid team, sporting a record above 500, but they struggled in another department, attendance. Mm. Right before the 1898 season, Robeson, who owned the Spiders with his brother Stanley, paid his... Sorry for the early pauses on this. I can't believe this is in the 19th century. I love the fact it's in the 19th yeah. century. This is definitely the oldest video we've ever covered. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is going back. Seemingly innocuous visit to the St. Louis Browns, who were perennial cellar dwellers in the National League at the time. That September, the St. Louis Globe Democrat reported that Robeson was interested in transferring his Cleveland ball club to St. Louis. The Spiders didn't play bad baseball, but attendance shrunk further as the Spiders played only 55 home games. Visiting teams didn't want to make the trip for such a slim portion of ticket revenue. Robeson visited St. Louis again that February while also reiterating that the Spiders would indeed play baseball in 1899. As expected, he ended up taking over the hapless St. Louis Browns, effectively leaving him in charge of two teams simultaneously. That's the conflict of interest, and such a yeah. thing is not allowed in today's game. The Boston Globe even pointed out that with Frank Robeson handling Cleveland and St. Louis, and many other league men holding stock in one or more clubs, should there be any wonder at the awful mix-up now going on in baseball. Hoping to change the fortunes of the Browns, the Robeson brothers gave the franchise a new name, the Perfectos, and that's when their plan went into motion. Between the two franchises they controlled, they would consolidate all the talented players in St. Louis, effectively throwing the Spiders under the bus. Among others, they transferred player manager Patsy Tabot, one of the best pitchers in the league in Jack Powell, future Hall of Fame shortstop Bobby Wallace, and another Hall of Famer in Jesse Burkett, who oh, won two batting titles in Cleveland. Yeah. And of course, it also meant that Cy Young would be headed to St. Louis. Even Marlins CEO Derek Jeter would look at these fire sale transactions and say, eh, that seems like a bit much. Bit too rich for my taste. Of course, the Spiders still had to field a team. 
In return, they received all the rejects from the Browns, a team that won just 39 games in 1898. But some of the good Browns players did stay to become perfectos, like the slick hitting center fielder, Jake Stenzel. I guess he was too good for Cleveland. Good you know who was good though? Lave Cross. He was the Browns' best player, rocking a 317 batting average and playing good defense at third base. He would become the player manager of the Spiders, but this wasn't a promotion, it was a punishment. Cross had filed a lawsuit against the Browns for not paying out bonuses in the 1897 season. So, he was shipped off to the island of misfit ball players, aka the Spiders, in wow. what I believe was an act of retaliation. Thankfully, he wouldn't have to stay there long, as any talented ball player was going to eventually play their way out of Cleveland, whether they liked it or not. Something yeah. <laughs> Under Lave Cross, who probably took up drinking again that spring, the Spiders got off to a roaring 8 and 30 start. That's a. T <laughs> That's exactly what Oakland A's did this season at one point. Yeah. They were at 8 and 30. Wow. I think they. I don't think they're obviously only going to win twenty games, but um, two ten winning percentage, which is beyond terrible, but wasn't that's, actually that's the awful. lousiest the National League had seen. The eighteen ninety Pittsburgh Alleghenies, for example, finished their season with a winning wow. percentage of point one six nine. Not nice. As a player, Cross didn't exactly set the world on fire. To be fair, he was juggling managerial duties with playing responsibilities, but he did manage to play his way out of Cleveland and make his way back to the St. Louis Perfectos. The Spiders had effectively become a feeder team for the other Robeson-owned ball club. Anyone with a sliver of potential wouldn't stay in town long. Then there was Chief Zimmer, the spider who stayed. Zimmer had been a productive catcher in Cleveland ever since the franchise's inception, so the Robeson brothers respected his wishes to remain in Cleveland. Well, they did respect them until he got off to a super hot start, slashing 342, 407, 479 in his first 20 games. They shipped him off to play for the Louisville Colonels, a team which featured a young Honus Wagner. Hey, at least Louisville is only a five hour drive from Cleveland. That's not too bad. Oh, I'm sorry, what is that? Cars looked like this in 1899? Okay, might take a little longer. <laughs> By the way, that 20 game hot streak from Zimmer was enough to make him the most valuable player for the Spiders by war that year. Congrats to Chief Zimmer, the best player on the worst team in big league history. What an honor. Newspapers in St. Louis took to calling the Spiders exiles, as they were comprised of those exiled from St. Louis baseball. Even rare wins were simply referred to as lucky. After the departure of Lave Cross, That's former crazy, Brown Joe Quinn. Yeah, I think it, I mean I think it's pretty clear that this is a very simple issue that it sounds like they've corrected since. In the, oh, the second you allow someone to own two teams. Yeah. In the same league, yeah, that, exactly. this, this is going to happen. You're going to have one that's naturally going to become a feeder team to the other, and yeah. they're just going to get gutted, and that is what happened. Yeah, and that's why this team only won 20 games. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the video. I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying I solved anything, but no, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's rough on it on those on those players that were left, and yeah. even the players that went the other way, like mm. get, shipping you off to this team that is going to be absolutely terrible. They must have known it was going to be a really bad season before it even started. Yeah, yeah, it just sounds yeah. like everyone Awful would have wanted story. to have yeah, it. Nothing like this would ever happen nowadays. It just no, wouldn't be allowed. No. I still can't, I'm not going to go into a game, but I still can't get my head around the fact that they can just up sticks and leave the teams, they can leave the cities. And yeah, that's crazy I think that's enough. always going to be strange to us. Yeah, it is definitely going to be something to get used to. But, Quinn was yeah, put in charge this. of the Spiders. Straight out of Ipswich, Queensland, Quinn was the first Australian to play Major League Baseball and was the only Australian to make a playoff yeah, appearance for over a century the... until reliever Graham Lloyd reached the postseason with the Yankees in 1996. Nearly 15,000 kilometers away from his place of birth, Quinn was given the Herculean task of winning games with a horrendous team that had gotten even worse thanks to the departures of Cross and Zimmer. On August 25th, the Spiders defeated the New York Giants to reach a record of 19 wins and 94 losses. They then went on a streak of futility that will hopefully never be matched again. Let's see how quickly I can get through it. L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L Dub. Yes, take that, 1899 Washington Senators. You suck, Arthur Irwin. You suck. 
L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L That last L of the season was pitched by a fellow named Eddie Cobb. He was a 19-year-old cigar store clerk and amateur baseballer from Cincinnati who somehow persuaded Quinn to start him on the final game of the season against the Reds. Maybe he bribed him with some nice cigars. At that point, the Spiders had literally started every Tom, Dick, and Harry they could get their hands on, <laughs> so starting Eddie Cobb didn't seem like the end of the world. Cobb allowed 19 runs that day, although only nine of them were earned. He Same also position. was credited for Same. a complete game thanks right, to his eight innings shot. of work. It was the only appearance of his big league career, meaning he retired with a 10.54 ERA. But he did manage to go wow. one for four at the plate with a single, so he does have one more hit in the majors than either you or I. Okay, that's a lie. I played for the Braves in 2001. This also wasn't even the worst pitching perf- Did he actually? Yeah, is that true? Yeah, yeah, he probably is. Oh, that's pretty cool if he did. Yeah. There he is. Is that foolish baseball? I, I've never seen that. I've never no, seen no, that. no, no, me no. either. Okay, that's a lie. I played for the Braves in 2001. This also wasn't even the worst pitching performance of the year for the Spiders, as they allowed 20 runs in an August loss to the eventual NL champion, Brooklyn Superbas, as well as 21 runs to the Baltimore Orioles in June. If you think those numbers are bad, wait until we take a closer look. 20 wins, 134 losses. You knew that already, but what's unfortunate is that those wins and losses have to be assigned to pitchers. Eddie Cobb started just one game, but seven spiders started at least 10. Of those seven poor unfortunate souls, four never played in the big leagues again. Jim wow. Huey might seem like the standout with a 4-30 record, but perhaps even more noteworthy is Frank Bates, who was saddled with 18 losses to okay. just one win. Now, obviously, this wasn't a strikeout-centric time in baseball. In fact, National Leaguers walked more than they struck out in 1899. But Bates' struggles can best be summarized by the fact that he walked 110 batters while striking out just 13. That's bad. More than a century later, wow. Craig Kimbrell basically <laughs> flipped those numbers. The yeah. Spiders managed to allow 1,252 runs. That's the most by any major league team in a season. With the pitching staff that terrible, they probably should have considered calling up Old Haas Radborn eight years after his retirement. Thankfully, Old Haas did the wise thing and died in 1897 oh, to avoid wow. pitching for the 1899 Spiders. Moving on to the offensive that. side of things, here's a shocker. The Spiders were also bad at hitting. Their most used hitters were all below average by OPS+, which isn't too shocking. But what is shocking is that there was only one member of the Spiders who mathist that year. His name was Harry Lockhead. Or maybe it's pronounced Harry Lockheed. I don't care. He's dead too. Everyone in this story is dead. Except Craig Kimbrell. While Lockhead certainly had his struggles at the plate and, him. He's in the, and story in the himself, field, right? we're talking about negative yeah. 1.5 wins above replacement here, he did pitch three and two thirds innings without allowing an earned run. Maybe he should have pitched more. As far as putting together a defense, I don't envy Joe Quinn. His team was basically held together by chewing gum and staples. He had a glue stick early on, but it was sent to play for the Perfectos. <laughs> One player he leaned on heavily was Sport McAllister. That's a great yes, name. A man named <laughs> Sport name. who played every position badly. Negative 20 oh. fielding runs on the year. <laughs> Tough luck, wow. Sport. A particularly wow. revealing stat would be fielding independent pitching, an ERA estimating metric based on the three true outcomes, strikeouts, walks, and home runs. Of course, 1899 didn't feature many of these, but Phipps still functioned as a good ERA estimator across a very large sample. The 1899 National League had both a FIP and ERA of 3.85, but the Spiders had a significant discrepancy between these two stats, leading me to believe that their defense was also historically dreadful. Altogether, they certainly put together a convincing case for the worst team ever fielded. Well, yeah, I mean, with those stats, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. No this is obviously the worst. Sorry, I was talking to them, not you. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, this is obviously the worst in terms of number of games won and mm. number of games lost in a in a season. But what is what's I'm wondering what is the most underperformed season out there? Which team was it and which year? So I'm thinking, like, if you had a team that was maybe going in there expecting to, I don't know, be around the playoffs yeah, and yeah. they ended up coming last. Like, yeah, what what would that be? What would that look like? So I'd like to maybe yeah, dig around that and see if we can find a good video. 
I also can't help but be impressed. Let me talk about what I mean. One day of glory. Is this going to be the win? Yeah, you get it <laughs> at this point. The spiders were horrendous, but there are reasons to celebrate them. Frank Robeson completely abandoned this squad. Anyone with talent was sent to St. Louis or shipped off elsewhere, and they played their last 37 games on the road because teams wouldn't make the trip for such a small share of ticket revenue. All things considered, Louis. it's quite the accomplishment they <laughs> even won 20 games in the National League. Of course, they finished last, but so did the Browns in 1898 with a similar roster. And what about the St. Louis Perfectos? They were mostly comprised of a former Spider squad that finished fifth in the National League in 1898. How did they fare in 1899? Yup, same end result. Wow. The Cleveland Spiders even managed to steal a win from the St. Louis Perfectos. Uh, there you go. A beautiful act of revenge against the brothers Robeson, the owners wow. who had forsaken the franchise <laughs> in the first place. Neither Stanley or Frank would live to see their St. Louis ball club reach baseballing success. In 1901, they were renamed the St. Louis Cardinals, but wouldn't become a force to be reckoned with until the arrival of the Raja himself. Rogers Hornsby, who was a one-man wrecking crew in the 1920s. There were even more memorable wins than beating the Perfectos. On July 1st, the Spiders entered the bottom of the ninth, trailing wow. the Bean Eaters of Boston 7 to nothing. Boston was a powerhouse <laughs> squad that won 95 games that season, but Cleveland somehow rallied to tie the wow. game up, and Spiders third baseman Suter wow. Sullivan walked it off dramatically well, I, in the I, I walked it off for the win. Newspaper accounts described a hectic yet wonderful scene. I want to see a video the Cleveland players yeah. were like a video lot about. of wild men when <laughs> Joe Quinn came in with the winning run. And the crowd was as wild as the players. Sullivan, whose single scored the last two runs, was surrounded, cheered, and hugged. After this, it made no difference what Boston did in the second game. Cleveland had glory enough for one day. In some ways, losing so much only makes winning that much sweeter. The difference in what the team brings me the most comfort the is that 1899 was the, the final yeah. year of the Cleveland Spiders' existence. They exited the National League never to return, and Cleveland baseball fans never again would have to deal with a team that disappointed them. Whew! <laughs> what a relief. Yeah, that was an interesting story. Um, Great little really, story. Really, really bad on the... Uh, the team to be stripped like that, but yeah, yeah nice, end, nice ending for him. Last 36. Well, it was just over. <laughs> but then, well, it was just over. Yeah, the season was done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 37 games on the road to finish just because nobody would come along. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, that's rough. Yeah, that, that, is is, rough. that is rough. We, I feel like we've had some really rough stories for Cleveland. What's what's some positives? What's a positive over yeah. the years? What's the, what's the best sports moment? from Cleveland. I imagine we get some really sarcastic comments, but yeah, well, what, is the, what is the best moment? Let us know down in the comments. Probably um, Cavs, maybe. NBA. Yeah, it could, could be, be Cavs, yeah, yeah. could definitely be that. Yeah, but yeah we, we hope, um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed the video. We certainly did. That was a great little story. Yeah. And um, yeah, please do like, subscribe and share if you haven't done already. It really does help us grow the channel. We'll see you on the next one.